And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down, second and right at a yard. But you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while, because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback, and no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. Yeah, he's got this to the 30 before being taken down. Big yardage after the catch. That one winds up going for 36. Brandon, we've both been around the game long enough that we know that in pregame, defenses are pretty amped up, aren't they? I mean, they're pounding lockers, and they can't wait to get out there. But when you hit him, it's a big nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Now the ball comes loose, and it's scooped up by the NFC. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Second and five. Being chased out left. Throw left side complete to Ross. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Sometimes it's designed, and sometimes you just have to know when to leave the pocket and move and make something happen. And on that play, he was able to get on the run and was still accurate throwing the football. So the call stands. Now they're out of challenges. What do you think about that? Do you wish that they had an... Limited amount? No, I don't. Because if they have unlimited challenges, we will be here all night because every call will get challenged. I like the strategy of determining when is the right time to make the challenge by the head coach. They'll run with Taylor. That one, a first down pickup of eight. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Second and two. Someone's looking fresh, and this old line is definitely looking their chops. Everyone likes to run block if you're an offensive lineman. Nice early burst. Nice gain, too. Clearly wasn't outside of the tackle box. There's your penalty. And accompanying that penalty, a loss of down. So now it's third and long, because remember, they also lose a down on the grounding call. Now the throw on third down, knocked away and incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. And my goodness, this is incomplete. The NFC's decision to go for it does not pan out. And this defense is gonna get the football back near midfield, right at the 48. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They'll run it now, out of the gun. 
Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Starters defensively for the NFC, they have nine guys with Pro Bowl experience. The two rookies, well, they're in the secondary. Both of the Chicago Bears, Kyle Fuller at corner, Eddie Jackson, the free safety. They join a three-timer in the Eagles, Malcolm Jenkins, and an eight-time Pro Bowler in Patrick Peterson of Arizona. He'll look to throw. And that is incomplete. The beauty of being able to play his own defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? It creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. The offense for the NFC back out there. And this offense last time turned it over, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. They're lucky, though, because no points against the team on the board, but we'll see how they respond. Yeah, they've got to get a lot of credit to their defensive teammates, don't they? They had their backs on that last series, and because they did so, that allows the coach to still stay aggressive on offense and maybe go for it again in a similar situation. I was going to say, maybe makes that offense feel good when you know you've got a defense making stands like that. Yeah, that loosen up things a little bit, right? Maybe you'll play a little bit better the next time you have the ball. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. That's interference. Well, let's see who this is on. So they saw the contact before the ball arrived. Penalty flag for pass interference. And trying to avoid pass interference is so difficult. You're trying to slow down these skilled receivers, and somehow, some way, they make plays on the football, and sometimes you're there too soon. And at the seven-yard line, the catch is made. A gain of 32 that time. That's a great job of working the sideline right there. I love how he tracked the football the whole way. Just reached up and pulled it in. Had excellent field presence to understand where he was in order to make that play happen. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Back to throw again. Steps away to his left. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Well, there's still time to rectify this situation because the silver lining, they took a sack on first and goal. But that close to the goal line, that still definitely hurts. He'll drop to throw, rolling to his right. And that's going to be caught. Touchdown, NFC. An 18-yard touchdown grab. And the NFC has taken the early lead. So the NFC with our first touchdown of the game. And, of course, we'll probably see some offense in this one. I don't know, though, that we'll see what we saw in 2013 when the NFC posted 62 points. You talk about pyrotechnics. That was crazy, even for a Pro Bowl. 62 points. I think you wore out your voice in that one, talking about all the touchdowns that were scored. I would love to see 63 or more, though, I got to tell you. All about offense in this thing. Pro Bowl offense. Let's go. This will be taken short. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Back out is the AFC offense. And it's been a rocky start for them thus far. They had the turnover and then the punt on those first two drives. So there is optimism because they've improved, right? <laughs> turnover, you just noted it. Punt's, punt's, better. punt's better than the turnover. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn it into first downs and hopefully points. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this D, has got to be priority one. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route, and what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing, and they got it done. 
Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. That's going to set him back five yards. A bad full start penalty there. Now second and six. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Third and medium, they opted to run instead of pass, and it worked. First down. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. Now a handoff working right. And the big boys up front, they're going to stop him right at the line. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Big boys down there in the trenches and a nice play to stop a bold. Nothing there. Yeah, when you talk about big boys, you talk about those defensive tackles, those nose tackles. They're not just big, they're immense. And what a big time play there. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off. A pretty decent game. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Certainly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's seven to three. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Here's the NFC offense set to take over again. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And now well, the pressure gets home, and the AFC comes up with a sack. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations, because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. Quarterback was hit. Now a nice throw here right side. He hauls it in. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. A gain there of 21 yards. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. This quarterback now already over 100 yards passing in just this first quarter. It's first and 10. Taking a shot for Samuel. And that'll wind up incomplete. Try to give his man room to run under it, but it's second down. Well, not that we had any questions, but it's obvious his arm does not hurt today, does it? He does not mind slinging it around. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. And that is the third sack this offensive line has allowed this first quarter. Man, that puts him on pace. Let me do the rudimentary math here. To be sacked 12 times in a game, I know he's not going to go for that. I wonder if it's going to reshape what they decide to do on offense in terms of play calling. Well, I can tell you what, when he popped up, shaking his head, frustrated right now behind center. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Defense. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. Now a dump off here complete. That one good for 10 yards. And that'll make it second and a foot or so. 
as a passer, you're always trying to find that open window to throw the ball downfield. How about this one? Right in the middle of the field. Right in the there he goes, left side. And all the way in for the touchdown. As his guys are in for six. And the AFC has taken the lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. This is fielded at the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. They're going to look to throw. He finds Ross right side. It's complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Right off the... It's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. That's the end of the first quarter. 64. On the handoff, it's Gaskin. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fit and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 11 yards there, first down. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What, is it three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they get to that end zone real fast. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Brand a perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You have to think on early downs like that first down there. Need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. So back-to-back -back incompletions. Third down here in 10, but you're still in field goal range. And that's the thing to keep in mind. They're in field goal range. So now you don't take any unnecessary risks, but you try and find a way to get back to what you were doing earlier in the draft in order to finish this one off. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards up first and second down. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. That's fielded in the end zone.
run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. Here's a second and two now from the 33. They'll run it now, out of the gun. I think you mentioned in the opening drive that these guys needed to establish the run, protect the young QB. Actually broke that down, believe it or not. So how would you assess things so far? I'm kind of touched that you actually wrote something like that down. <laughs> I appreciate that, partner. But I do think they've been able to do that. Maybe not as effectively as they've wanted to, but I think we'll see more of as this game. They want to continue to take care of that young QB. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. And now a pass dumped off to his running back, and he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. He lost four there, and it's third down. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can suck and guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize it is broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them. And they run that quick cut on the slant. And oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. A full start backs him up five. First and 15. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll go down at the 28. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. For whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an next defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. The NFC offense heading back onto the field. And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the draw. They'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've you described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. They want that ball in. Yeah, they'll be going for six. On the carry, it's love. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Let's go, baby. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Hey, lock it. On play action, they'll throw. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off right around the 43. And he'll get this 
this back to the 32-yard line. Oh, timing is everything on a route like this. He tried to drive that football into a tight spot. And if you're a little early or a little late, chances are there's going to be someone there. And sure enough, this one's going the other way. Here's a throw, complete right side to start things out. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 15 yards on the play, first down. They ran that one well, and not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. And that's one of the reasons you like the blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Second and six. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film. And he will take this in for an AFC touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown run. And the AFC is able to widen their advantage. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Extra point up and through. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. He has not had the game that he envisioned. His team has not had the game that they've envisioned here. So how do they turn this around now? Well, right now what he's looking forward to doing is finding a way to get the added weight on his back. Is it like that monkey that Steve Young was? Pressure and the AFC gets to him for the sack. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> they come up on second and long, and the pass protection just has not been there this afternoon. They'll try the left side. Taylor fighting room at the 30, and finally taken down at the 36-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that, that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. Now back to throw. This is Fant on the short completion. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's going to have to observe the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. And now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. A big pickup of 12 yards on fourth down to keep this drive from stalling. Back to throw now on first down. Got a man open. It's Ross. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Completes it to Fant on the right side. And they move this all the way down to the nine. That's good for 28 yards. 
the goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. A perfectly executed crossing route. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. It seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. He'll look to throw. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Well, so a drive that spans all that time, and yet you may only come away with three points here. Well, your defense, all right, they actually like these long drives. They get to rest over on the sidelines for a while, but when you're not finished, with points in terms of touchdowns, that's frustrating. They've got to figure out how to close out these long drives and get sixes instead of threes. That drive took him inside the 10. Good job defensively to hold him to three. Yeah, I like how you did that. Give a little tip of the cap to the stop troops there because they didn't give up a touchdown in that situation, right? Made him kick the field goal. And yeah, points went against them, but that feels a whole lot better running off the field. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Now they go screen. It's complete. Fighting through it. He's got space. Push the foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. So mark off the yardage for roughing the passer. And I've seen this before on a screen pass. Now are you rushing the passer? You're rushing him deeper than normal. And I think a little frustration kicks in at the end. You're going to hit him anyway when you shouldn't. Throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. They were trying to go to Brown once again, and that'll bring up second down. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. They'll set up a throw. Man open left side is Brown. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though we completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. And here comes throw number one for the backup QB. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Back to throw now on second and ten. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. Holding offense. Umpire through the flag usually always indicates holding, and that's what we've got. And you know, depending on their positioning, where you are on the field, the umpires get different responsibilities, but always, always making sure no one's holding. That's caught over the middle by Fant. Now the AFC going to take a timeout. It's their second, as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. On third down, Taylor. He's able to chew up eight yards on the carry there, but still fourth down upcoming. I like what they were thinking on defense. Just guard the first down sticks. Don't let anyone pass that. Didn't matter whether they threw it or ran it. They just ended up rallying to the football in the running play and stopped them short of a first down. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Now the end.
UFC going to call the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football, complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. And he will find Ridley on the left side. Now the NFC going to take a timeout. They're second as they'll stop it with 17 seconds to go in this first half of action. The numbers for the NFC on third down, they're struggling. 0 for 6 thus far. This will be third and six. He'll look to throw. Dancing to his left. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And this is going to be intercepted. Able to get there and pick it. Likely time for one final snap as they start out first and 10. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we're at halftime of the 2019 Pro Bowl with the AFC out on top. As we'll send you across town to our studios here in Orlando and check in with the coach at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Boy, this AFC team has figured something out. They've got the lead again, looking to make it three in a row since the game moved to Orlando in 2017. So the question, what can the NFC do to come back? We'll ask that of our guys as we send you back to Camping World Stadium. Okay, coach, appreciate it. A one touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. That's fielded in the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 20. The offense heads out to begin this third quarter. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. This is a little bit like baseball here. Strong up the middle. Both sides want to be that. In this case, the offense ended up winning the ultimate battle. And those big runs between the tackles, that's a little deflating for a defense, isn't it? It really is because that's where your strength's supposed to be. You're supposed to be in a spot where they can't make that yardage there. You're supposed to send them outside. Not in this case. Now this throw caught left side. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely love for. How about that one? That was great, and what our camera missed was the fist bump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired up. That's a big game. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four. And he is in. Touchdown, NFC. A six-yard touchdown run. And the NFC just an extra point away from tying up this game. Solid job up front. Really just a solid job all the way around to get that one in. Yeah, that was well executed, wasn't it? Well blocked, well run. End result, six points. Touchdown. No problem there on the extra point. And that will tie things at 20 all. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. 
Quick hitter here, it's complete. Powering his way forward. How about a 39-yard pickup? They'll take it. It's not a surprise when you read scouting reports and watch tape because you know he's a heck of a player. But he is so difficult to get down in the open field. They just want to get him the ball and let him do his thing. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 12 yards there and a first down. This defense might want to wake up on this drive and stop them before that first down marker. Unfortunately, it's easy to grade the defense right now. Not good. Three plays, three first downs. They've got to come up with something to slow them down. Fast start, offense. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. A full start backs him up five, first and 15. A handoff as they run the counter play. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. The Giants' Olivier Vernon in on the tackle. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, that was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. That's a good job there creating the contact to force the incompletion. And now since it's fourth down, that should set up a field goal situation. And a nice sigh of relief defensively to be able to hold them to three. So it's his third field goal now in the ball game, and they've needed his leg. This last one gives him the lead. It's been a back and forth kind of a game, hasn't it? Now you got to tell your defense, guys, we need you to make this stand up because we got the momentum going in the right direction, but we need you to make sure we carry it home. The offense for the NFC back out there. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. But he's free going down the left side. It's a foot raise. Touchdown. A big play there. 64 yards. And the NFC has retaken the lead. That's what we want right there, CD. It's a Pro Bowl. Give us some of these long touchdowns. We want plays that cover a lot of ground. We want long-distance plays, whether long-distance runs, long-distance passes. It doesn't matter. In the Pro Bowl, big plays are what we're all looking for. Extra point safely through, and that will make this a four-point game. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, no? I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader, making sure that you're playing well, and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. Mm -hmm. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. And look at this. They come right back with a big shot downfield. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. An excellent gain, 35 yards. And you need a big play? Go to your big play guy. Listen, that's football 101. When you have to have it, you expect that guy to step up. A lot of people call these receivers divas. Sometimes just leadership when they get in the huddle and say, get me the ball, I'm about to make a big play. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. 
but the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. The AFC punt team out there now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Here's the NFC offense set to take over again. And they hit the home run last drive. One play on the ground all the way to the house. Now the defense, maybe they're expecting a run here. Partner, I love your description because when we talk about hitting the home run, we're usually thinking about a passing play, aren't we? Something in the air, deep ball. But how about them just taking it big time jaunt? Now if you're coming back out, now they've established this run game, the play action pass could very well be open. Flush to his right. And he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. All in all, no gain on the play, and it'll bring up third. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. But there was pressure all around him, so the only play. And it's a fumble. And that's picked up by the AFC. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it up. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten. They'll come out throwing here on first down. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. It'll be a gain of four, and it'll be second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. On second down, Love. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That was good, tough running right up the middle. And if the defense can't penetrate and make him slow his pace or change direction, that's often the end result. They'll run on first down. It's Taylor. They're going to snuff this play out behind the line. We have not seen that much today. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Okay, let's, let's decide here. He was open, right? Not extraordinarily open, but open enough that if you're an NFL quarterback, yeah. you got to make that throw, right? Yeah. That's got to be complete. Nine times out of ten, that's a completed pass. Yeah, he missed that one and missed it in a big way. And he's got this down to the 35. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blip scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. This quarterback now, six for six since coming back out of the locker room. It's first and ten. They'll set up to throw, sliding out of the pocket. He finds Ross right side. It's complete. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. They're going to look to throw. And, boy, they had high praise. 
And put it on the board. It's six. A touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown run. And the NFC adds on to their lead. Defensively by now, you know his ability. You know he has it in him to take off and run. Yeah, because they knew coming into this game, but we've already seen examples in this contest that he can run the football. I think they're going to examine different ways to rush him now. Is it, are they going to do it with different lanes? Are they going to use a spy? But they have to come up with options because right now, he's hurting them. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. The AFC offense making their way back out and down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take Let's over for them offense. here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, Let's the go, punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. A false start backs them up five, first and 15. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. It's a gain of nine yards. And that'll make this a second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is, possess the ball for a little while, get at least two first downs, give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. That catch good for five, it's third down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? Not like any of them, especially if it's a good receiver. That makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. And they're going to get him behind the line yet again as his nightmare afternoon continues. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. It's the AFC with the football and the lead as we begin quarter number four. It's the AFC with the football and the lead as we begin quarter number four. Second and five. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. They follow up the gain of five by only getting one there on second down. I know exactly what's going to be about that play from the defensive perspective. Oh, you got deep? Yeah, yeah. Out of the gun now on third down. Throwing middle, and it's complete. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. A gain of 19 and picking up the first. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance. Not with him. We've seen it too many times. And movement up front looks like a false start for the AFC. So that one will be accepted. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. They'll look to throw. Under pressure here, and down he goes. Shaq back at about the 43-yard line. Well, the beauty of screen passes is they take a little time to develop, and they can often hit big, but sometimes they take too long to develop, and sometimes you get sacked. Yeah, what's perfectly called for a defense to attack a screen? Typically a blitz, and even though people think that the screen operates against the blitz, if you have the blitz called and you still cover the screen, that allows your blitzers to get there. Try to lay one up deep. It's caught inside the 25. And he makes it all the way down to the 13-yard line. A big play there for the AFC, 43 yards. A lot of running backs in the passing game, they're just used to check it down to them or maybe dump off passes. But this guy, they use him to stretch the field, don't they? The stretcher right there turned it into a really nice game. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. They had the huge play last time. Here it is a much smaller gain of two. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instincts. Being able to diagnose run or pass. He's going to be sacked back at the 23-yard line. 
Well, that takes a start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? No, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. On third down, they'll try and run for it on the ball. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15 yard line. So they'll turn to the kicker again. He's been a busy man thus far. And his kick is indeed good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. This is taken at the three. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Getting set to go again as we look at the back heading onto the field again. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back because that means everything's coming together for you. Big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there. And on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously. But at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. And he's taken down inside the 30. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. He spins free. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Ten yards on the pickup there. It'll be second down. And while we're seeing more and more of these plays come from the college game into the NFL, and that one, it was run with great success. How about the evolution of the offensive linemen? We're seeing less and less big guys who can't move and more and more guys who are a lot more mobile and can get out in front of that type of a play. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? Brandon looked like he had his hands on it for a moment, but let, let's face it, that was going to be a tough catch all the way because of the presence of the defense right there as he was trying to haul it in. Yeah, nice job to force the incompletion. So that's a big one. Obviously, Charles makes it a two-score game, his third field goal of the game, able to knock it through. Yeah, not exactly free and clear yet, but as a defense, you get to play a little bit looser, don't you? Because you do now have a little bit of a margin of error, don't you? And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. The AFC offensive unit getting set to take over. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side, maybe a little gas. Yeah, right? a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting upfield and giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Decent start to the drive there. Of course, they need the touchdown, two-point conversion, and a field goal. Yeah, those guys are into it. How about the guys on the sidelines? You see the coaches signaling, all the personnel groups up on the sideline ready to go in and out of the game. They've got to condense their time now in order to try and get back into it. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, 
they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better than it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. That, I believe, will put him over 100 yards receiving for the game. Yes, it will. And he's got a first down to boot. He'll drop to throw. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. Not able to go anywhere that time. Second down. This possession means so much for them. They've got to focus on this drive and find a way to make this a one-possession game. Yes. Got to get a score. Yeah, so good with a field goal. Don't necessarily need a touchdown. But they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he'll be brought down with the first down and a late flag here, too. And he may get a few more tacked on for good measure. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. Maybe a critical mistake at this juncture is now they've got a first and ten. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Face mask, defense. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Automatic first down. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. Back to throw. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. The six-yard line, the line of scrimmage on second and goal. On second down, Jacobs. And he will fight his way into the end zone for a touchdown. It's a six-yard touchdown run. And the AFC able to draw a bit closer. All right, now a big two-point conversion attempt still to come. Incomplete. Protection was great. He had time to set up a campsite. But in the secondary, though, they were ready. And I think that in most places on the field, if you have that much time to throw the ball, someone's going to shake free and you'll find an open receiver. But condensed near the goal line on a two-point conversion, all that extra, you know, there's not any extra field. So it kind of closes in on them, and that allows you to cover a little bit better. They'll start the drive with Love here. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that. On well, the first play of the drive there. Set, ready? 90, wolf. Screen, let go. Got the screen. Ready? Off play action, Lawrence. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. Going with a dime left on defense. Two extra defensive backs on the field and covered up essentially every blade of grass. That allowed them to disrupt the play. Pressure from his right and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Now the AFC gonna take a timeout. It's their second. 
That's going to be their second. They'll be left with one more, plus the two-minute warning. And we'll be back. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them, because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. 43 yards on the punt, seven-yard return, and out will come the offense as they take over. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And flags come in as he gets forward for about three yards. Now let's check on the call. So they will tread backward on the holding penalty. And I know that they're going to get coached up and they'll get yelled out a little bit, but let's face it, it is hard not to do at the speed and pace that they play. They'll look to throw. And a loose football. And it's scooped up by the NFC. And they are going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not even going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. Following the fumble recovery. Lawrence. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sank back at the 29. And now here comes the third of their timeouts defensively. So they'll be left with only the two-minute warning to stop it from here on out. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Shotgun handoff now for Love. Yeah, nothing doing here as this time the run maybe gets him back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. And this is why the head coach gets paid the big bucks. Look at where they are in this situation, partner. Do you throw the ball here in a long-distance situation? Do you run it again and trust your defense and make sure you take care of the ball and punt it away? What kind of options do you have here, and what do you trust more on your team? Yeah, they may have just pushed him back into that throwing situation. We'll see. I love the intelligence the defense just showed there. Read their keys, saw the screen developing, ran to it and smothered it. What a third down stop by them. Well, from a defensive perspective, though, I think maybe they're saying, hey, we did what we needed to do, kept this a one-score game. Yeah, without a doubt, because they were able to bleed some time off the clock, right? Put themselves in a good position, but it's not out of reach yet, okay? Being able to hold them to a field goal means that they do have a chance to come back and win this game. The situation for them offensively as follows. Down on the scoreboard. And time, a huge factor. They need a touchdown and, of course, a two-point conversion as well. They're looking for his tight end on the corner. It's complete. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. And they knew that before the play even began. Still executed it. How many times have we seen it happen where you know it, yet a guy's still looking for a... Got a man. It's caught inside the 10. And he's able to get this way down deep into enemy territory. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the... Oh, no, he lost the football! Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. A place like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the... And he's into the end zone! No flags! It's a touchdown! And now a two-point conversion, and we'll be tied here in the final minute. Do they have one big call left? Here we go. Here we go now as we get set for a big two-point conversion. So they got the touchdown they needed to cut this to two, but now they've got to get back to the huddle. No celebration time. Got to figure out what they're going to do on the two-point conversion. Huge, huge conversion there to tie this thing up, but they're not done yet. Their defense needs to get a stop. Yeah, there's still plenty of time for the other team to come downfield and put some points on the board. But job one was taken care of. The two-point conversion to get this thing tied. The NFC offense heading back onto the field. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. 
and they've got to feel comfortable with that. But they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. On, Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. They'll hand it off. It's Love. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Throw left side, got to be taken in by Harris. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Second and nine now. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. Now the NFC going to take a timeout. They're second as he'll stop it with 13 seconds left to play. On third down, Lawrence. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. Tie game, fourth quarter, and they're going for this thing on fourth down. On fourth down, Lawrence eluding the pressure right. He'll fire a desperation throw for the end zone. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Wait a second. That's got to be a mistake. They declined it. That doesn't make any sense. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. The offense for the NFC back out there. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. 15 yards on the play, first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. Now a first throw here in overtime. Well, the pressure gets home, and the AFC comes up with a sack. And they weren't in zone coverage. They were in man, and each man did his job. And that looked like vintage, old-school coverage, didn't it? Man coverage reminded me of an old Raiders team. They had a Hall of Famer at one corner and a Defensive Player of the Year at the other, and they just locked people down. Taylor. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. Offense. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. They'll look to throw here. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. I know there may be temptation to go for it here in overtime, but you have to punt the football. I like how emphatic you are about it because I know the tendency is, as a player, let's go get this thing. You're actually telling your coach, come on, coach, we can get it. We have that play call. And the head coach has to remember, 
That play call likely isn't there. Punt the ball away. Punt it away. Be smart. Trust your defense. Trust them. And to give this time to the tailback. Brought down around the 16 or 17. Had a nice move, but couldn't free much space. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Tough running there. That's a hard earned four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't throw up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Seven yards there and a first down. Charles, you get into these overtime situations, that's not a bad guy to dial into. Well, when you have to have plays, especially in a spot as you just described, you're an OT, you've got to go to the guys you can trust and you know are going to make the plays. Well, they say, it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Jerry's. They go back to that well. He's had a great game. Defensively, they haven't been able to stop him. Same thing here in overtime. And sometimes that goes to the play caller's ego because a lot of times you have so many different plays you want to call. But when you spot a matchup that's working for you or a player that has the hot hand, keep giving it to him. That tells me you're mature as a play caller and it's working for them in overtime. Now a throw here on second down, and that's complete. The reception good for seven. It's third down. A little dinking and dunking that they're doing. It, at some point, is it appropriate to maybe take a shot? It is if you feel good about it. But otherwise, you do what a coach told me a long time ago. Take what they give you, but make them tackle. In other words, get it to one of your guys in space. If he makes someone miss, that could turn into the big play you're looking for. And on that last play there,